Hey friends, if you've been following me in this channel, you'll know that I'm always on the hunt for ways to make fresh and new sounds. Well, oddly enough, in this video, we're going to explore how utilizing techniques from 40 years ago can make cutting edge music today. I bring you Fast MIDI. So back in the 80s, the original iconic Nintendo gaming console came out, and in my opinion, some of the greatest video game music of all time was written then. Many of them by this man, Koji Kondo, who is criminally underappreciated. Most of y'all don't even know who this guy is, but I'm willing to bet that you have his music stuck in your head all the time. Koji Kondo is mainly known for musical masterpieces such as, I don't know, Super Mario Brothers and Zelda soundtracks? But then you look at his Wikipedia and this dude should be headlining Red Rocks. Like, holy shit, this man is responsible for my childhood. What's even more impressive to me is that this guy could make music that is so memorable and so groundbreaking, but he had to pull it off with extreme limitations. What do I mean by limitations? Back then, the original NES only had five channels of audio two square wave synths, one single triangle wave bass, a noise channel for like percussive and sound effect sounds, and then an audio sampler, but the catch was that the sampler could only run at one bit. And we're all complaining now that the new Ableton doesn't draw us a hot bath and do our taxes for us. What's even more crazy is that the polyphony or the amount of notes that this original NES machine could play was limited to the sound engines themselves. So essentially you could only make chords with three notes in them at a time. I can't think of a better example of limitation being the mother of creativity than this specific situation. Essentially, you could only make chords with three notes at a time in them. And this was where composers like Koji came up with this super interesting technique. Instead of giving up on more complex chordal shapes, they wrote the notes of these more complex chords sequentially which basically meant that they were using very fast arpeggiations to make up for the limited polyphony count of the NES. Enter what I'm calling fast MIDI. Ableton 12 has a ton of new and exciting ways to generate fast MIDI, and I've discovered a bunch of really fun ways to make sounds that take a cue from the past, but can launch our music into the future of sound design. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm utilizing what I'm calling fast MIDI in this intro to the song that I'm making as Earth Cry. So take a listen to this. <laughs> You can hear that there's these two different chords, right? And they're very complex. There's a lot of notes in them, right? But of course, instead of playing all those notes at once, you can see that they are just quickly arpeggiated in the piano roll. So let's take a look at how I did this. I'm gonna go back to session view, okay? I actually really enjoy using session view for this technique. So in case you didn't know, if you are in arrangement view and you've got a lot going on, like you've got a crazy composition going on, you can always go back to session view and hit this button right here, the stop button. And what that means is that all the tracks are now taken over by session view. So you can get in here and start experimenting. I think that a lot of folks immediately go to arrangement view and they're missing out on so much ideation and improvisation and trying to figure out like how an idea might work. So a real quick analogy for this is that if you're a painter, you have a canvas, right? And you have a palette where you're mixing the colors up, right? Similarly, I think of arrangement view as sort of like the canvas and then session view is sort of like the palette where we're mixing up the things that we're going to do. So you can see this uh, 15 RPG Drifty. This is using one of my random preset generators. Um, you can see that down here I have some original. W w what does this mean? Well, if we look at these clips, these are actually just chords. Let's take a listen to this clip. So this clip is representing the notes that I want in this chord, right? Or at least some of the notes, and I'll explain what that means here in just a second. But let's get a beat going on behind this clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to arrangement view, and I'm going to play one of the clips here, and I'm going to loop it. All right, so here's a place with a drum loop going on. I don't have to make this go very long. Essentially, I can say, okay, D and B loop. I can actually allow this specific track to play in arrangement view while I mess around with the sound in session view. So check this out. All right, cool. So I've got some drums going along with this clip. So now I'm going to pull this up and let's take a look at what we're able to do with Ableton's new uh, arpeggiation transformation tool. So on the transform tab, we can go to arpeggiate, right? And so I can select these chords. And what's so interesting about how the transformation system works is that it only works on what you have selected. So if I want this chord to do something different than this chord, that's really easy to do. 
Okay, so first of all, I happen to actually have this song, ironically enough, in C major, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the auto apply. I don't know why they called it transform, maybe because they wanted to save space on the button, but I'm gonna turn that off because I wanna talk about a couple things first. When you're using an arpeggiator, a normal arpeggiator that you find on a normal keyboard usually doesn't have a steps feature. Okay, what the steps feature essentially is saying is that with every arpeggiation pattern, shift it up or down a certain amount of distance, right? Essentially, if we were to normally arpeggiate this, I could select this chord, right? And then I could apply a 16th arpeggiation. So if I do that, we get this. Now, this is what I would consider to be a basic or a vanilla setting to any arpeggiator that you're used to using. However, things can get really interesting when we start to spin this up quickly. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and spin this up really fast. Let's go to 64, okay? So now I'm gonna apply this. Now we're starting to get into that kind of like, you know, retro video gaming, like chiptune kind of territory, right? I'll go ahead and turn off my headphones just so that it doesn't play every time I select this. Now check this out. I can add a distance to my arpeggiation. So I can say, all right, I want, let's see, two steps, okay? So what this means is that it will go up 12 semitones every time an arpeggiation pattern has ended. So let's do that. Now, do you notice how that's sort of an interesting subdivision of time right here? Let's try to turn on the transform button and let's try some different rates. Let's try 48. So that's sort of like a long triplet laid over top of this 4-4 beat. One, two, three, right? Let's go faster. Like 96. Now that's getting into what my original idea was. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So. What's interesting about this is that depending upon the steps and depending upon the rate, you can get these really interesting subdivisions of time. Let's try a different arpeggiation style. Right now we're going up. So because we're going up, the pattern is only so long. But if I went up and down, notice how the pattern is now much longer. So let's go ahead and make that faster. So what's interesting about this technique is that this is actually how I composed this next section inside of this song. Take a listen to this. Check this out. So again, what's happening here is I'm just taking super fast MIDI, right? Super fast arpeggiations, and I'm utilizing different patterns of them to create these subdivisions of time. And so this is a really interesting thing for the listener, right? And so going back to this guy, something else we can do with chords is that we can actually utilize the scale system. So if I turn on scale and we look down here, we can see, uh-oh, when scale is on, okay, you'll notice that this changes from ST to SD. Well, what does that mean? Well, essentially, it's going between semitones and scale degrees. What's so awesome about this system is that if you know what key you're in, and this song happens to be in C major, which I know is so basic, but I just started, I just started going, and this is what I came up with. Um, you can actually make these arpeggiations follow scale degrees with each step of the arpeggiator. Okay, so let, let's explore what that looks like now. If you use a super wild, crazy chord like this with six notes in it, this scale degree system might be pretty weird. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna select this area, okay? So this is my chord. And really quick, in the, in the spirit of experimentation, I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit Command-I a bunch of times. And what that does is that actually makes a bunch more scenes. Now you'll notice that there's a bunch of scenes in there. What I can do is I can actually hold Option and drag up, and what that'll do is that'll duplicate this clip. So now I can freely mess with this clip without worrying about messing with my original. Notice that I've also labeled this original, right? So I'm gonna go into this clip and check this out. I'm gonna delete this, the top notes of this chord. Okay, so now we just have a triad. So this triad is very uninteresting, right? But check this out, I'll select this triad, okay? And then with my auto transform button on, my auto apply button, I'll dial in some different distances of these scale degrees. So check this out. Now that's an octave. Seven scale degrees is actually one octave. So that's not really different than using 12 semitones, right? But as I go down, check this out, let's go to uh, five scale degrees. Whoa, wait a minute, we're starting to make interesting chords here. Four. Ooh, that's a dark one. Let's go up a little bit higher, like to nine. Really interesting chord shapes we're making here, right? 
crazy, right? Let's undo that and try something else. So right now this is just a fifth, right? So I could potentially get rid of my octave up note and just have two notes. And let's do something else. Let's switch this over to up down, okay? And now we'll try different scale degrees. Let's try that five again. I really enjoyed that. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Make it go really fast. And so of course there's all these different patterns, right? And if you change the amount of steps, you're gonna get a lot more notes. So hopefully you can start to wrap your mind around how amazing this is and the potential for making really interesting music. Let's look at another example. Okay, so a lesser known feature that got added to Ableton 12 is some updates to Ableton's actual MIDI arpeggiator. So we're gonna grab the MIDI arpeggiator and drag it down here and take a look at some of the new things that you can do. And one of those things is that you can spin it up super fast with milliseconds instead of like a clock division, right? So for example, check this out. So here's a, you know, here's a normal arpeggiation, right? I'll go ahead and add some harmonics here in this arpeggiator, right? But you can also spin it up super fast. Again, fast MIDI, right? Let's make this more apparent by uh, adding some distortion to the filter. <laughs> so listening to this, that's an F, right? Something that's interesting about doing this is that this is akin to using like a delay, right? A super fast delay. You can actually get a note to emerge out of spinning the arpeggiator up super fast. Let's try to get this down to an F. Okay, so around 23 milliseconds sounds like an F. Something I've noticed that's interesting is that every note you add to this is going to make the note that you were originally playing last longer. Let me show you what I mean. So here's an F, but if I had two notes, we can hear that new note emerge because we're not hanging out playing that one note super fast. We're going between two notes. So now three notes, and then all the way up to... So right, that's four notes, right? So something that you can do is you can, uh, you know, let's play like an F minor, for example. So something like. So there's all these really interesting things that can emerge when you're doing this. Another thing that's interesting about this is that you can use this to make effects. So let's do this. Let's make this second um, oscillator. Let's make its envelope really fast. And so we're adding a really bright tailing edge. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like by itself. All right, so we can hear that really bright edge there. Check this out. If we change this rate really quick, we can make these effects with it. We could turn the distortion off maybe to get a little bit less of that uh, extra note there. <laughs> So using envelope MIDI, let's go ahead and map this to the rate. So now. <laughs> so when I'm playing a chord, that chord is really easy to hear, right? And this almost gives it like a mallet effect. But if I'm playing a single note. <laughs> we can hear all this crazy stuff emerge. Let's go ahead and make this uh, envelope the full distance. So instead of having a sustain stage, we'll just have this full uh, data right here. And so if I turn this all the way up, we get... So we can make these chords emerge, right? So... Ridiculous. So something else we can do with the arpeggiator that's new in terms of fast MIDI is that we can actually lock this to the scale that we're playing. So for example, if I wanted to increase the steps, right? Remember, we're in C major at this moment. Let's go ahead and do a different scale just to change it up a bit. So let's do F minor pentatonic. So now I can just hold whatever. <laughs> And I can generate these really interesting note blasts, right? Of course, if I play one note... <laughs> I 
I love it. Let's go ahead and make this envelope a little bit faster. So something like Now that can be a little bit annoying, but something else that we can do that's so interesting is there's this velocity setting. So if I turn the velocity setting on, what does this do? This will essentially change the velocity information coming out of Arpeggiator over time. And so we can choose, okay, so one second, let's make this a little bit longer. Let's make this like four seconds for now. And then we can choose a target. Do we want this to crescendo or decrescendo? So we can make maybe make this go down to a really low amount, something like two, okay? Now what we have to do is go over to any instrument that we're using. In this case, I'm using operator. I have to tell this instrument what to do. So maybe I'll go to my, my carrier, my original oscillator here, and I'll say, all right, I'm going to make the velocity effect over the volume 100%. I might have to turn this down before I do this. Let's go ahead and turn this down to like 24. So take a listen. I'm just holding a note down, that's it, right? You can see right here, I'm just holding this note down. But you can see over here that the velocity target is going down to two. So if I play it really hard, you can see that velocity going down over time. So this is interesting in a multitude of ways. One of them is that essentially this velocity decay happens based on the pattern. So if I play a pattern, <laughs> we can get these really crazy spreads of notes, right? That's like 16 or 17 notes held right there. I'm just pushing the keys down on my keyboard. Let's try a different step count. So maybe three steps, and we'll make our distance a little bit shorter, something like five. Now, of course, you can always get into operator, and then the whole entire game changes when you change the shape of the wave. Let's do something like maybe like what a game system would have been like. So we have, you know, like a square wave, for example, and we'll take this guy off. Anything that you use with pulse waves is going to be immediately like it's going to give you like a retro vibe because Nintendo's original melodic voices were basically pulse waves, right? They were different pulse widths. Like, for example, this is like a shorter pulse width. And then this would be like a, a longer one. Right. So everything that you heard on those consoles was something to the order of this. I'll turn this back up to compensate. But what's interesting about the tools that we have these days is that we can take this entire idea and move it forward into the future. So for example, we could animate a filter, right? So I could change the envelope of this filter, for example, and I could apply that to the filter frequency, right? <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn this back down. So let's go ahead and use this uh, envelope MIDI to map this to this filter frequency. And now we get, let's go ahead and change the uh, envelope back to something useful. <laughs> I'll change my target back toward the middle so that we can get, um, so we can listen to this, the effect of the filter a little bit more so. <laughs> Love it. Let's turn on the uh, shaper distortion. <laughs> Just wild stuff, right? So with the envelope MIDI off, this is our sound. It's kind of this crazy... <laughs> really, really weird sound right there, right? But something we can do with this uh, interesting velocity control is we can have velocity affect something other than volume. Okay, so right now, of course, it's gonna go down to this target, so. But something else we can do is we can use velocity elsewhere. Let's go down to the master tab and let's use velocity to map to something different. So for example, we could say, this will now map to the volume, okay, of oscillator B. And the amount is all the way up. Right, so check this out. If I turn my steps all the way down. We can get these metallic, really interesting effects. And this is sort of also kind of like hearkening back to the original effects that were made on the Nintendo, utilizing the super fast notes on the noise mode, right? 
So something you can do is you could make like a chord progression, for example, by doing this kind of action. So let's go into the operator clip. And one more quick tip, if you hold a chord, you can click right on your keyboard and you can draw that chord out if it, as long as your cursor is hanging out here. So here's this chord. Go ahead and turn my velocity up here. So now our riff is this. So let's just say that that is our chord progression. Something we can do is we can go into the envelopes though, and we can go back into our arpeggiator and click on rate. Going back into this clip, we could actually make this go from fast to slow, or slow to fast, for example, in this case. <laughs> and let's go back the other way. Now let's go back into the arpeggiator and start to add steps to this. So hopefully you're starting to see that there are a lot of new sound design capabilities here by simply spinning the notes up so fast that it's hard to tell what's happening, right? Notice that by decreasing the gate time here, we can get a different timbre. Now we could also do something even more wild and that's using the chord trigger mode. And what this will do is this will play the entire chord. I'm gonna have to filter this down for sure. Let's do something like this and we'll turn the envelope down. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn the uh, shaper off of the filter too. Cool. So obviously there's a lot that you can do with the arpeggiator features in Ableton, but it doesn't stop there. There are so many other things that you can do. Like for example, you can use note length or a really interesting one called note echo, where you can actually repeat MIDI similarly to how you would use a delay. And this thing can get super wild. And of course, in my Ableton courses, I go into extreme detail using each one of these MIDI transformation tools and how you can apply them to songwriting, how you can apply them to composition. So if you like how I teach and you like the sounds I'm coming up with, you can check out this link up here or down in the description or comments. But either way, I hope that this inspired you. I hope that you get into here and start using fast MIDI in your compositions. Much love, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.